Okay, so this is the third uh, video lesson on measurement and uncertainty. Uh, we have talked about actual value that we're looking for, but we're measuring because we don't know it, so the measured values do it multiple times. The error, which is the difference, but we don't know this, so we can't really know that. We can know sources. Uncertainty, which is kind of ballparking and telling how much we can trust this number within what range, right? Uh, the range of values that we got, the accuracy and the precision. We talked about systematic versus random error. We talked about specifying the uncertainty, but we haven't talked about how you get the uncertainty or how you estimate it, because we don't, we can't get the uncertainty. If we knew the uncertainty, we'd get the value and life would be magical. Um, so we specified the uncertainty, there's significant figures, decimal places, absolute and relative uncertainty. So right now, we're going to look at estimating the uncertainty uh, of a single measurement. Next time, we'll talk about propagating uncertainty using significant figures for multiplying and dividing, and decimal places for adding and subtracting, okay. and absolute versus relative. Actually, we've got that flipped absolute value, absolute uncertainty for adding and subtracting, relative for multiplying and dividing. So Okay, quick recollection, you can take pauses and take notes if you need to. Remember, if you're just going to give the measured value, you've got the number of significant figures, which is easiest to see if you write it in a scientific notation, plus minus some number 1 to, to 9, point, whatever it is, times 10 to whatever power, always write units, make a habit, don't be sloppy, it doesn't take that long. Or the number of decimal places, which really is easiest to see if you just expand it, that is if you multiply that 10 to whatever power out, so you take this and you expand it and you go, oh, I see the decimal places are out to 0.1 centimeter. So, if you want to write your number with a plus or minus uncertainty, then there's the absolute uncertainty, which is your measure value with units, plus or minus absolute uncertainty with units, it's an amount. Uh, or you can do measure value plus or minus absolute uncertainty, parentheses, those units, centimeters, hours, minutes, whatever you got. Uh, you can also write it as relative uncertainty, which is measured value, units, plus or minus a percent, no units, right? So that's the percent of that. And we talked about how you go back and forth. So if I have the absolute uncertainty in the value, I can get the percent, simply that, absolute, divided by the value, take the percent. Um, and that'll give me this. If I have the percent of the absolute of the measure, I multiply the percent, of, take the percent of that, multiply, and that'll give me my absolute. So we know how to do that. Okay, cool. But how do you get the uncertainty when you're taking a measurement? How do you do it? So estimating the uncertainty, you're taking a measurement. Maybe how long something is, how far you walk, whatever it is, time. If you're timing things, mass, things like that. Well, there are three things that I want to point out here. There's the range, as we've talked about. That's the low to high range of values you've obtained as you repeat the measurement. We know taking one measurement, maybe, you know, sometimes it's like, okay, I got the measurement, fine. I don't really need to do a bunch. Uh, good if your lab partner does it too. See if they got the same thing. Often it's off a little bit. Anyway, there's the range of values, and sometimes you'll, you'll use that to ballpark and get a sense, okay, of the repeatability of your, of your measurement. This is a very important idea here, instrument uncertainty. This is really your guideline. How good is your instrument? We'll talk about that in a moment. So your instrument uncertainty is usually, almost always, the smallest increment on your measuring device. Sometimes people will talk about half of that. It gets pretty dicey, and if you overstate your certainty, uh, it's kind of like overstating your abilities. It's like, yeah, I can dunk the basketball, uh, when they lower the rim. So, um, but it's usually just, just look at the instrument, it's the smallest increment, write it down, always take notes, because uh, pretend now in your training that you are uh, actually using this in practice, okay, and getting paid for it. That's instrument uncertainty, the smallest increment. Depends on your device, we'll look at that in a second. There's also something that I kind of, so, with these quotation marks, I term uh, measurement uncertainty. Just want to make an awareness that sometimes there are conditions that you don't have the time and or money 
to do any better right now, and you've been asked to do this measurement right now, and this is all you've got, so you do the best you can, but there's something wrong. Be careful, be very careful with this. So this is going to make your uncertainty in your measurement more than the instrument, right? You can't all of a sudden get better than the instrument will give you. I mean, maybe you end up getting closer to the actual value, but you don't know what that is. So uncertainties add, uncertainty grows. They can't cancel out, um, at least uncertainty that's in your mind. Maybe, again, maybe one ended up giving you too high a number, and then another thing ended up giving you too low, and it sets you exactly there, but you don't know. That's an important concept. So it's going to be more than your instrument uncertainty. And this, doing this, writing this, stating this, explaining this, attempts to account for other identifiable factors, concrete, that are unavoidable at the moment, given the funds that you have, equipment that you have. And then you tell your whoever's holding the purse strings, hey, we need to buy some better equipment because I want to push this precision, I want to push my certainty, and I want to get better instruments. So let's take a look over here. Measurement uncertainty. You might think, oh, it's human error. There's human beings, that's the problem, and I can't get rid of that because I'm not automating it. It's human error because there's humans. Well, what I want you to do with this is have a little tiny little lobotomy in that part of your brain that ever knew that that phrase existed. Never, ever, 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 ever again use those two words together as some sort of, there's no hum human errors like saying, you messed up. Oh, I messed up, and I didn't go back and fix it. I mean, if that's true, say I messed up and I didn't go back and fix it, we need to go redo this. You know, that can't happen. But this is not any type of error, uncertainty. You, you never say that. It's always interpreted, wow, this person is pretty green and not really thinking very clearly. Now, that's different than reaction time. If I do this with your friend, you drop the thing and they you know, go like this. Now, if you do it together, it's like, ooh, look at my reaction time. But, uh, you know, what's your reaction time? And you can measure that. So you can know human reaction time. If you're using a stopwatch and you go, you know, you start and you stop. There's some element of reaction time in there, which you might be able to ballpark and say, okay, this instrument gives me maybe to a hundredth of a second on the dial. But you'll see that in your range of values, they're going to vary much more wildly than a hundredth of a second because of reaction time of the, the person, the timer. And you can explain that. But that is not human error. Yes, it's a human being. But don't use that. So you can say reaction time. Now, how can you avoid that? Well, you can get a laser beam and have it cross the laser beam. And then how thick is the laser beam? And where's the cutoff? And what's the electronics? That's the sort of stuff that people sometimes look at. Okay? So this is a great example. There is the instrument uncertainty of usually a hundredth of a second, say. Um, there's the reaction time of the person, which means your range is going to be much more than a hundredth of a second. So you can say your measurement. One way to ballpark that again easily is go, well, I got from here to here. And have different people doing it, and whatever the case. But not human error, please. And we hate that term. It just doesn't mean anything. It's vacuous. Let's take a look at lengths. Okay, lengths. Uh, you can use a yardstick on the, or the inside of the meter stick. So here's a yardstick, right? Here's a meter stick. Remember that a yard is less than a meter. Okay, uh, but a meter is almost a yard, plus about a few inches. Plus. Okay, and so I look at that and I go, okay, here's an inch. What's my instrument uncertainty here? Well, how many ticks are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So on this guy, my smallest increment is an eighth of an inch. So it's plus or minus one eighth of an inch. On some of them, you'll see a sixteenth of an inch. So on this one, a ruler, a sixteenth of an inch. If you put that in your calculator, 
calculator, also known as a phone, uh, you go 16, or 1 divided by 16, 0 0.0625. So 1 16th became 0 0.0625. You have to be really careful with that. Keep all the tall stay with that. When you're dealing with fractions and then turning it into an uncertainty like that, it's pretty, pretty iffy. Usually when you cite an uncertainty, you're just giving one significant figure to the uncertainty because you don't know it for that one. Okay. Um, for example, uh, if I use a meter stick. Now if I use this meter stick, it's a meter. And if I trust it, then I'd say, well, my measurement, I could measure it. The smallest increment here is a meter. And maybe I could guess where half is, but that's, there's no marks on it. And I go here, oops. Well, what's that? It's a fist. It's 10 centimeters, 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. So this is plus or minus 10 centimeters here, right? Or one tenth of a meter. I go here. I go here. There it is. 10 centimeters still. 10, 10. And this is plus or minus one centimeter. And I go here. Good plus or minus a tenth of a centimeter, also called a millimeter. So if I go over here, I could put 0 0.1 centimeter. And again, you might uh, fidget with half of a millimeter, but uh, how, how do you know this has an expanded or contracted temperature? I know it's marked well. It's a pretty dicey business, right? But this, you can say that's the smallest increment. Can you do better? Yes, you can do better. You can use a meter stick. You can use a two meter stick so you don't have to piece them together. That's good. Or you can use something called a vernier caliper. But however, the problem with this is you're going to have a hard time measuring how wide or long this desk is because that only goes up to about, well, let's see, 12 inches because I've got, uh, excuse me, 12 centimeters. Uh, and five inches because I've got an inches scale on the top and a centimeter down here. So uh, we'll talk about how you read that, but what you realize when you're doing this, it's better than using a meter stick or a ruler because you get 0 0.01 centimeter. And so you've reduced your uncertainty. And for smaller things, you're going to get a smaller gap, you have a micrometer, and it's a really clever little system of lining up lines. You just have to kind of figure out how to see that. And the micrometer is going to give you even better plus or minus 0 0.001 centimeters. And you can convert that to millimeters too. So the tool that you use will determine your uncertainty. Yes, there might be other factors. If you're using it incorrectly, that's, you know, get that straight or get you know, get another job or something, but um, so you know, work on it. So that's instrument uncertainty, and that's really uh, your your main guiding principle, as well as the range that you get, and that can inform you that there's maybe there's other factors, and then that, that takes some words, not just numbers, it's words, numbers with units, analysis, and that's where real engineering goes. Engineer, engineering firms. Science firms, uh, labs, require communication, written and verbal communication. It's an important, important part. Uh, many folks complain about the lack of those skills. How are we doing? Six minutes. Let me try this out. Uh, well, before we do that, okay, first let's go over here. So we've talked about lengths. And again, looked at the smallest units. Talk about the smallest units on your device and improving that with these clever scales. Uh, remember, SI system is the same as MKS. We can also use CGS, the K kilogram or the G gram. So we have different scales, like maybe I want to know how much the mass is. We'll talk about the difference between mass and weight. They're not the same. That's use too much, but I can use a scale like this, and you can see the marks aren't very close together, and 
you know, where this item like that. I'm not going to trust this very much, and I'll get a sense with this. I can look here at this balance here. And if I look in here, I'll look for the smallest increment. So this is 10. I look over here, it says grams, 20. And then over here, grams, so 1, 2. And I, a good thing to do is look at where 0 is. That edge is 0, not that edge. This edge is 0. So when that edge goes to 1, that's 1 gram, 2. 2.1, 2.2. So 0.1 gram is as good as I'm going to get with this guy, right? So I might want to measure my chalk on here and figure it out. But I can use, if I really care, electronic balances, precision standard, right? And this ruler here, and I can do it over and over to see if I get the same result or if I get some range, is 44.79. Unless I breathe on it. Oops. Yeah, I made it go up. So, um, so 44.79 grams. So 0 0.01 is the smallest increment here. 0 0.1 gram, 0 0.01 gram. So let it guide you. Uh, time. Uh, this guy, I don't even trust to the minute. You know, it's like, it doesn't even go off. You don't go past this, whatever. So there's that. Uh, this guy is good to the minute. It blinks seconds, but you want to do it. And this guy is down to uh, not a tenth, a hundredth of a second, which is pretty good. But then if you're doing it this way, you introduce something above and beyond the instrument uncertainty. Now, let's go here. Suppose you want to measure things like electricity, magnetism. Here's a piece of equipment that you might use in your lab, a battery, a chemical battery, right? But there's no it's not a measuring instrument. So it's part of your equipment. And it has its specs and its limitations and so on that might need to be talked about. But in terms of reading a value, you might have, for instance, dials, old school, using coils and electricity going through it, magnetic deflection. Uh, and you just look at the smallest increment. Look at the units, because folks that make this, of course, know that they've got to put units on here. And that'll be your instrument of uncertainty on here, right? This is volts, DC volts. This guy, a digital multimeter, multi meaning it can measure lots of different things, is very cool. And the good news is, to get the instrument uncertainty, you just look at it. Here's volts on this guy. Uh, 0 0.0 volts, so a tenth of a volt. If I go over here, change the setting on volt still V, I get a hundredth of a volt, a thousandth of a volt. But in, with electricity, you might get a lot of craziness and you add, I don't know what's going on there, and you, you change it, and you adjust it. You can measure amps, alternating current amps, which is current, direct current amps. You can measure resistance in ohms, we'll talk about this stuff later, capacitance in farads. Um, so very cool. You know, and you just look at it and say, okay, at this setting, there's my instrument uncertainty, which means I can't know any better, right? And if you need better, you need a better piece of equipment. So you write that down. So that's one measurement. Maybe you take a bunch of measurements. What do you do when you put them together? What happens when you put them in an equation? You measure a length, and then you create a volume. Or maybe a width here and a length there. One thing you can do is get the perimeter. That's two widths plus two lengths. How does your uncertainty grow? Because it always grows, just know that. What about area? When you take a, a width times a length, when you multiply that, what's the uncertainty there? Volume, etc. When you combine into your equations uh, your, your measured values, how does the uncertainty grow, or we say propagate, through the equations? And that is the next topic.